Hello friends, welcome to the ServiceNow world and today we'll see part 20 of ServiceNow developer interview question and answer series. So without any delay, let's go to the first question. So the first question is, if you enable audit in any parent table, does child table also get audited? So if you go to the table dictionary, you will see one checkbox that is audit. So if you enable audit in any parent table and if that table got extended, so that that child table also get audited. So the answer is no. Tables does not inherit that audit flags from parent or child audited tables. So for example, if you enable auditing for the CMDB CI table, only CI is stored in that base table are audited. And let's say like if any CMDB CI underscore hardware or server, so if they, they are also extending the CMDB CI table, right? So that not get audited automatically until unless you have to check check the audit uh, audit checkbox there uh, there itself. Okay. So now we are moving to the next question. So the next question is what are the advantages of scoped applications? So if you mentioning in your CV like you have worked on the scoped application, then they, they may ask uh, like for starting the conversation, they will ask this kind of question. Okay. So the answer is, so uh, like scoped application provides strong application boundaries and runtime isolation means it's having private scope that uniquely identifies them. So like scoped application comes in a like package. So if they they having their runtime, uh, they are providing one runtime isolation environment. Okay and that you can identify by seeing their scope so like maybe some x underscore something something their name will be there okay so whatever the scope is there you will get the scope tip okay next point is you can have delegated developers specific to scope for developing application so you can you you can assign a delegated developer role and that developers like those developers will be dedicated to that particular uh, application only like whatever the functionality they have to develop so those developers only can develop okay next point is scoped applications are sandboxed from system at large and utilize a restricted api to minimize prevent damage anything outside of their scope so as i told earlier scoped applications are coming in a package okay it's like a kind of like all the functionality wrap in a single package and that package we are calling as a scope Okay, so whatever the query will run, whatever the query will execute, that will run inside that environment. So if if, if you run any uh, wrong query uh, or which taking a lot of time, so that will that that will affect only your application scope. It will not affect the complete platform. Okay, so that that will also advantage. The next advantage is if you open App Studio. You can see all the configuration related to the scoped application in one place. So if you know, like we having the app studio in service now platform. So if you open any app in app studio, you can see all the configuration like tables, menus, modules, and whatever the configuration, you can see all the configuration in one place. So that will also count as an advantage. Okay. So now we are moving to the next question. Next question is what are the different types of operation available in ACL. This is the most important question, but you don't have to name all of the operation. If you able to uh, name like four to five, that will be enough. So like uh, first one is execute, create, read, write, delete, list underscore edit, report underscore on, personalize underscore choices, edit underscore task underscore relations, Edit underscore, edit underscore ci underscore relations save underscore as underscore template at add underscore two underscore list so these all are operations are there but you don't have to remember all of them just remember four to five that will be enough and if you want to know in the detail like what is the exact use of that so then you can refer the service now docs okay so now we are moving to the next question so the next question is what are the different types of service catalog items 
द मोस्ट अंडर रेटेड क्वेश्चन आई हैव फाउंड ओके सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ बेसिकली सर्विस कैटलॉग आइटम्स आर देयर फर्स्ट वन इज रिकॉर्ड प्रोड्यूसर सेकेंड इज ऑर्डर गाइड्स एंड थर्ड इज कंटेंट आइटम्स सो इन लाइक इन वेन यू गिविंग आंसर्स यू डोंट हैव टू लाइक गिव द लाइक फर्स्ट यू से रिकॉर्ड प्रोड्यूसर देन यू कैन गिव द डेफिनेशन ऑफ रिकॉर्ड प्रोड्यूसर इफ दे वी लास्क देन यू कैन टेल द डेफिनेशन ओके इफ दे आर नॉट आस्किंग यू जस्ट सिंपली टेल द नेम दैट सेट बट इफ दे वी लास्क लाइक वॉट इज द रिकॉर्ड प्रोड्यूसर यू जस्ट से लाइक गिविंग अल्टरनेटिव वेज ऑफ एडिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन सच एज इंसिडेंट्स एज अ सर्विस कैटलॉग फॉर ऑर्डर गाइड ऑल्सो लाइक टू ग्रुप मल्टीपल कैटलॉग आइटम्स इन वन रिक्वेस्ट एंड सेम फॉर कंटेंट आइटम्स इफ दे विल लास्ट डेफिनेशन देन यू देन ओनली यू कैन टेल अदरवाइज नेम विल बी फाइन ओके नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कैन वी मेक डिस्प्ले वैल्यू टू ट्रू फॉर मोर देन वन फील्ड ऑफ अ टेबल सो द आंसर इज नो ओनली वन फील्ड कैन बी डिफाइंड एज अ डिस्प्ले वैल्यू फॉर अ टेबल so when you set the display value to true a business rule set the display value to false for other fields on the table so this option you will get for making the field display value true when you open the table dictionary so when you open the table dictionary you will get lot of the uh, fields right in the fields you will see one option is there that is displays so you can make only one field uh, one field value uh, dis display value to true not more than one okay so this thing you can remember it now we are moving to the next question next question is what is the difference between additional comments and work notes fields so if you work work down the incident so you will see that like a not an incident like in other uh, other tables other uh, other forms as well you see that like work notes and additional comments so what is the difference between them so the work notes field is specifically designed to capture information related to the ongoing work and progress on a record and only itl users can update this field so basically the work note is like for using for internal purpose and that is uh, for updating whatever the whatever the uh, updates we are putting in the work note that will be visible only to our internal team okay and only itl users can update it additional comments additional comments field is more general purpose and is often used to capture additional information comments or notes and can be used for general inform general communication and including input from end users and any user can update the additional comments so basically whatever is that like if you need any input from uh, like caller or any like requester then you can put in now uh, additional comments and that additional comment will be visible for every user even for the requester as well okay for so for the end and end, end users this additional comment will be visible so whatever the updates you are putting in additional comment just be careful on that okay so that is the uh, that that is the main difference like uh, i can say like uh, work notes is used for internal purpose and additional comments is used for external purpose like that you can say that that kind also one more difference is that okay now we are moving to the next question so in the last video i have asked what is the use of sys from underscore name in glide ajax so in glide ajax uses sys from name to find which function to use so when we like using the glide ajax api we are passing one parameter that sys from underscore name and then we put the comma and then we have to put the function name so whatever the function we have to call from the script include that we are passing uh, in after the, in the sys from name okay so like that so so today's video question is what is the difference between actual elapsed time and business elapsed time and if you know the answer please write in the comment box and i'll give the answer in the next video till that time thank you god bless you all